Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you an exciting dramatization of an unforgettable story on the Hallmark Playhouse. Tonight's story was chosen from the whole world of fiction by one of the world's most popular authors. His knowledge of stories that will entertain you and stir your imagination is universally recognized. For he is the author of Goodbye, Mr. Chips, Random Harvest, Lost Horizon, and many others you have loved in books and on the screen. Hallmark is proud to present the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to be with you again. Tonight, we have one of those stories that doesn't try to settle any of the world's pressing problems. It just goes merrily along, as life itself should do if this were a perfect world. It's a magazine story that appeared a few years ago and took a lot of people's fancy, including mine, and possibly yours too. It's called Mrs. Union Station. Odd title, isn't it? And this is its first performance on the air. The author is Douglas Welch, a Seattle newspaper man. And believe me, he's written the kind of story many a writer wishes he could write, if only for the fun he gets. You're right, Mr. Hilton. We have a treat in store for our listeners tonight. For Douglas Welch is not only a spinner of good yarns, but he also has the appreciation of a realistic person. Here's something he wrote recently. What most of us need, above all else, is just a word now and then to let us know that people care. Those are significant words, Mr. Welch. And they express, as well as any we know, the reason for remembering to send Hallmark cards to your friends on those special occasions when you want them to know you're thinking of them. For Hallmark cards say just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. Now, here's Mr. Hilton and our story. feel about trains. But for me, they've had a very real fascination ever since I was quite young and had toy trains to play with. I suppose children prefer toy airplanes nowadays, or do they? I have a feeling the trains still fascinate them. While as for the grown-ups, well, here's a story about a man and a girl. The man's crazy about model trains, and the girl, in the case, is crazy about the young man. Love being deaf as well as blind. It was perfectly natural for Helen to rush happily into marriage with Stephen without discovering his great weakness until they were off to New York on their honeymoon. Then, struck with dark misgivings, Helen spoke to Steve in their compartment. Steve, I really must talk to you seriously. What's the matter, honey? Steve, if there's anything wrong, I ought to know about it. Wrong? What do you mean? We'll be in New York in an hour, but it's taken us five days to get there from Chicago. We've been on five different trains. The New York Central, the Pennsylvania, the Nickel Plate, the Lackawanna, the... The, uh... the Erie. So? So who's following me? Nobody. But as long as we're in this part of the country, I want to see as many railroads as I can and, and their equipment. What? I like railroads. You like railroads? Love them. Love them. That's why I didn't take that bus two days ago. What have you got against Greyhound? Well, nothing, only my goodness. Do you think I'd want it to get back to the Northridge Model Railway Club that I rode a bus? The Northridge Model Railway Club? Well, sure, didn't you know? It did not so state on our marriage license. It's my hobby. Railroads and model trains. Oh. We've got 500 feet of H.O. Gage track in Harry Johnson's basement back home. The Chicago Alton and West Coast. Why don't you? Don't I what? Love railroads. Darling, if you care for them like that, let's have just lots of them. Honey? Yes, dear? I'm almost through shaving. Will you call room service and send up breakfast? I'll have you set up a menu first. And a couple of railroad timetables. I like to read at breakfast. What? 
Could we uh, maybe go to Central Park today? I thought we might go up into New England. Oh, that'd be nice. I want to ride on the Central Vermont and Rutland. Oh. Now, this is a great experience for me. Yes, marriage is, so they tell me. I know. We'll ride the independent subway today. Oh, Pete, Pete. In fact, never mind breakfast. Let's get started. All right. And when I get really hungry, I'll faint in front of the Jamaica Green Turret Express. Huh. Ah. Steve. Huh? Honey, do we have to stand in the first car at the front window? Can't we sit down and enjoy the first-class accommodations which our nickel provides? Yeah, we're coming up on that red signal block pretty fast. I'll talk to the motorman. Oh, no. I, I just have to rap on the glass of this little cubicle, is all. No, oh, what's with you, friend? Uh, we're coming up on that red signal block pretty fast. I know. We're all going to be a gruesome pulp. Thank you. I still think there isn't enough headway between trains. That depends on the brake. Wait a minute. Oh, honey. So what's the beef now? Uh, in your opinion, motorman, which is best, straight or automatic air brake? Makes no difference with me, boy chick. I just drag my feet. Wise guy. Let's look at the Long Island Railroad instead. And then let's have lunch. Then there's still a Third Avenue elevator. And then let's have lunch. And I want to take it down to Grand Central Terminal to hear the train announcing. And then let's have lunch. Here's a hard boiled egg from my lunchbox, lady. I had a late breakfast. Oh, thanks, boy chick. It was a charming honeymoon, full of tender remembrances, like the snapshot of Steve's wife with Steve's caption reading, Helen, standing next to consolidation 280-type freight locomotive, pure bituminous coal mixed with anthracite. It was all so lovely, and Helen hated to go back to Northridge unless she could walk back. No sooner had they settled in their Northridge home than Steve invited her to a meeting of the Model Railway Club in Harry Johnson's basement. Mrs. Johnson was there, too to see that they didn't short-circuit the washing machine. Well, what are we supposed to do, Myrtle? Not touch anything. Oh, my goodness. How does your laundress get around in this maze of tracks? Oh, she used to be a contortionist on the Keith Orpheum circuit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, got it, boys? Yeah, got it, Keith. Uh, Yale wins the toss and elects to kick off. Okay, Johnson, let's have that order for number 17. And number 17 meets number 402 at East Kansas City. And you've got a slow order over two sections east of Alton on account of track repair. Okay. Train number 17, the Continental Limited, now leaving on track four for Pontiac, Springfield, Alden, Kansas City, and all points west. Goodbye, dear. Short. There she goes. There she goes. There goes the Continental Limited. The Continental Limited slid like a great dark ghost out of the silent yard. Gathering speed as it thundered into open country, roaring powerfully toward the wash tub, plunging like some great prehistoric monster into the tunnel in the wall of the fruit closet. Then, hurtling around furnace curve, the great driver smote the rails with giant power, plunging up and up and up to the high plateau near the old wooden ice box to pull in with a great sigh at the small lighted station gathering its mighty iron sinews for the next thrust into the mysterious enveloping night of the Great Plains. Ah. Uh, number 17, arriving on time. Oh, uh, great work on that 3% grade, Steve. Thanks, Johnson. All right, uh, girl. Yes, sir. Uh, Helen, we are assigning you to a manual switch in the Chicago yard. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Myrtle, uh, can you handle the South Bend passenger traffic? I'll do my level best, Harry. Okay, everybody, on your toes. We're five seconds late with number 34. Let her rip, Steve. Uh, hey, Helen, watch out for that freight train. Oh, I'm watching it. Don't worry. No, you're not. Hey, hey, look out! <laughs> For goodness sake, I'm not much of a switchman, am I? <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Well, for heaven's sake, I'm sure the road has insurance. Send a man back to put a flare on the tractor. 
Seven cars derailed. I'm sorry. We haven't had a derailment on the Alden and West Coast in three weeks. Well, don't grieve, so. I'll put them back. Don't touch those cars! Goodness. The only way we can get those reefers back on the rails is with the wrecking train. And it'll take two solid hours. We're routing all traffic on that line. I'm sorry. Okay for the wrecker, Steve. Better rip, Johnson. <laughs> Helen, darling? Yes, dear. Now that we're home, did you ever see anyone turn a switch on a railroad while a train was passing over it? No, I guess not. Then why did you do it? Uh, I don't know, Steve. Oh, please, I can't discuss it anymore. Very well. The incident is closed. Even if the switch was open. Gee, Steve, thanks. That's mighty big of you. Hmm? What's that? It's as big as a Hudson-type locomotive with alligator crossheads and a booster on the trailer truck. Why, Helen. Don't Helen me. Oh, but Helen. Go cuddle a cow catcher. Good night, Casey Jones. What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? The Hallmark Playhouse is presenting the comedy Mrs. Union Station, a story selected for you by James Hilton. More than a century ago in England, there lived a strange, mystical sort of a man whose fame has steadily increased with the years. Though it is not given to most men to win everlasting distinction in any line of endeavor, William Blake, at 45, had won renown in two separate fields. As both poet and artist, he ranks as one of the greatest figures in English history. How could one man accomplish so much? What was it that enabled William Blake to surpass other men of his times who have long since been forgotten? Perhaps the secret of his greatness is best revealed in his own words, taken from a letter he wrote to a friend in the year 1802. And the significant words are these. I leave no stone unturned, he writes, and no path unexplored that leads to improvement in my art. Words like those might easily be written about the folks who make hallmark cards, for they go to great lengths to create the kind of greeting card you like to send, in appearance and in the sentiment expressed. Each card must be the finest they are capable of producing. And there's a very good reason for this. You see, they're not making just cards. They're creating hallmark cards. Cards that are warm and sincere and friendly. Cards that say just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. That's why hallmark cards are America's favorite greeting cards. And that's why those three identifying words on the back are hallmark cards. Tell your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Now, James Hilton continues with the amusing and entertaining story by Douglas Welch, Mrs. Union Station. Well, we're midway in our story, and we know what sort of man Steve Appleby was. And when the date of the big university homecoming arrived, he couldn't get away because he was building a new locomotive. She didn't mind Helen going. No, not a bit. So she went by herself and had a wonderful time, especially at the alumni dance, meeting all her old friends. Tommy, dear man. Helen, sweetheart of my college days, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, Tommy. It's good to see you again. Ah, the lovely lady in blue. You know, you grow more beautiful every year. Oh, Tommy. You're married. I know it. Read all about it in the papers. Oh, the eternal journal. I sulked for weeks. Wouldn't eat anything but barley broth. <laughs> you poor thing. <laughs> uh, do you still dance so magically? Do you? Let's both find out all over again, shall we? Tell me, what does your lord and master do? Oh, he's assistant vice president of the Chicago, Alton, and West Coast Railway. Mm -hmm. He's a big man. It's a small road. 
In fact, it's a model railway. He's really district sales manager of the International Small Appliances Company. But the model railroad is his life's work. I should think you'd be his life's work. <laughs> same old time. We're the same old tactics. <laughs> like a... Let's go someplace else and talk. Remember how we used to always park here? Oh, not always. Sometimes I park with Steve. Steve, Steve, Steve. But I'm glad you came up here, Alan. I'm glad I came up here. I'm going to see more of you, I hope. I don't think so, Tommy. Oh, yes, yes. My sales manager has assigned me to the Northridge Territory. Oh, what a nice coincidence. Mm-hmm. By another nice coincidence, I'm the sales manager. Oh. I'll be in Northridge early next week. Well, you'll give us a ring right away, won't you? Oh, to meet your husband. Oh, you'll love Steve. Yes, I'll bet. And uh, if you want to make a hit with him right away, bring him a couple of timetables and a picture of a caboose. Oh, honey, I'm sorry you weren't at the homecoming with me. Steve, you'd have had a wonderful time. I had a wonderful time right here with my new engine. But on three separate occasions of the game, the cheerleader said, All right, let's give with a big locomotive. Gee, I'm sorry I missed that. <laughs> oh, but guess who I met up there? Tommy Germain. Oh, the boyfriend of Sigma Ru? <laughs> oh, that's right, you know about Tommy. Yeah, now let me tell you what Johnson said about my new locomotive. Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hello! Hey, we're just talking about you. Well, Tommy's in town already. Where are you, at the station? Tell him to take a taxi right over. Uh, how about dinner with us, Tommy? Well, I'll pick you up in my car in five minutes. Fine. We'll... What? Oh, you shouldn't have done that. Well, here I come. Now, there's a great fella, Alan. Why? He brought me a couple of timetables. <laughs> Steve, uh, I'm sort of interested in railroads myself. Is that a genuine fact now? Mm-hmm. My uncle works in the passenger department of the Southern Pacific. That's a mighty good road, Southern Pacific. They put out a very readable timetable. Yes, I've always felt that was the case. Mm -hmm. uh, how long are you staying in town, Tommy? Why, as long as they're business for me. Well, then maybe you can come to the country club formal with us later on. I'd like you to meet the model railway club. Why, I'd be delighted, Steve. I consider that a fine opportunity. A fine opportunity. <laughs> Tommy, I haven't seen Steve all evening. Just dance. And I'd like him to dance with me once or twice. That's a very singular and abnormal craving. Squelch it. Just the same, I... Dance. I still say, what's the use of building a beautiful model engine correct in every detail if you're going to cover it up with a lot of tin streamlines? Yeah, yeah, but don't forget, we're running through highly competitive territory with track trains like the Century and Super Chief operating against us. Yeah. I say, if the other line streamlines, we've got to meet the trend please, and streak, please. huh? Oh, hello, Helen. Having fun? I'd like to go home, please. Why, what's the matter? I don't feel well. Oh, that's too bad, Helen. Yeah. Uh, uh, gentlemen... Uh, we'll streamline next week. Come on, Helen, I'll get you things. Now then, Steve, sit down. I want to have a talk with you. What's the matter? Where about? Don't you love me anymore? Don't you even feel somewhat attracted to me? Enough to dance with me just once in front of everybody? Oh, you mean about tonight? I mean about every day and every night. It's like being to, married to a, a union station. Oh, gee, Helen, I never really. It's the point where I'm ready to walk right out of this house if you ever mention a coal car again. Not a coal car, a tender. Oh. Coal cars are called hoppers. They have nothing to oh, do with yeah. Helen, please. Oh, no, I don't do that, Helen. I'll, I'll never look at a train again. I'll, I'll even turn my head away when we drive by the depot. No, I don't want that. I just want you to love me a little more. Oh, sure, honey. Sure, sure. Sure. Oh, I don't 
know, Helen. I don't know if that husband of yours is cured. He hasn't been to a club meeting in three weeks. Yes, I know, but you caught him reading a timetable in the garage. Oh, oh, that. Well, he just wanted to know what time the scenic limited runs out of St. Louis, that's all. Look, Helen, you can't taper off a model railway theme like a drug addict. Well, so far, so good. You'll see. Helen! Oh! Helen! Guess what? What? Barkerville is in town. Well, who is Barkerville? Barkerville, he's only the owner of the biggest, finest, most complete model railway system in the world. Uh Uh-oh. The movies use his railway for all their miniature shots. Saves them a fortune. He's over at Harry Johnson's now, and they want me to come over. Can I go? (laughs) Well, Steve... I just want to be able to say, I shook Barkerville's hand. But, Steve, this is our wedding anniversary. Well, don't worry, honey. I'll be back in ten minutes, not a second more. Amazing, Parkerville. Uh, Simply amazing. Isn't it amazing, boys? Oh, thank you, thank you. Then there's my rather famous imitation of the Western Pacific whistling through the Feather River Canyon. Oh, that's for us. Yeah, let's yeah. hear it. Huh? Well, now, you, you put your palms together like this, as if in prayer. Uh-huh. As if in prayer, yeah. Yes. The sides of the thumbs firmly together, like so. Uh-huh. You cut the hands slowly and crook the thumbs, keeping them firmly together, mind you. Here we got yeah. you now. Press the lips firmly against the second joints of your thumb. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then in this matter, you grow. Like this. <laughs> Jumping cat. That's incredible. Oh, thank you. It's me amazing. But the reality of it. Yes. I mean, you're there with the Western Pacific. Oh, thank you. Get out. Oh. Huh? You walk the baby up. Now you go someplace else and play. Uh, Yes, dear. Let's go someplace else. I'm terribly sorry I woke you and the baby again, Myrtle. It's just that Steve went over to your place three hours ago. I'll call somewhere else. I'll call somewhere else, all right. Hello? Tommy, this is Helen. Oh, what's up, Helen? I'm going away. I'm leaving Steve. Leaving Steve? That's ghastly. Uh, where are you going? To my mother in Grand River. Can you get me the tickets? I can not only get you the tickets, but I can go with you. Well, how? Why? It so happens my sales manager wants me to go to Grand River. I'll pick you up in 15 minutes. I'll be all ready, Tommy. You're a real friend. Sorry we have to take the train to Grand River, Helen. Oh, that's all right. I hate trains. Me too. I couldn't get a plane. Oh, I'm, I'm grateful to you as it is, Tommy. Oh, it's a sad sound in the night. Wakes people up. Oh, oh, look. Hey, did you see that engine go by? Hate them all. It was a yard hog. It used to be a road engine. You can tell by the big firebox and boilers. But you can't change a lady. A lady's a lady. Helen, uh, I've been thinking, you know, hmm? about, about us. Oh? How, how nice it would be to, to settle down in the country in a, a nice little house. Oh, well, uh, you mustn't say such things, Tommy. Yes. Sweet little house. Sweet little No, uh, please, Tommy, not yet. Nice yard. Garden full of flowers. Workbench. Workbench? Oh, what do you work at? For me? Uh. I make model ships. <laughs> You what? Ships. Model ships. That's what I thought you said. I have a quarter-inch scale model of Nelson's flagship that's one you more... You right. heel! Who? You, you contemptible beast. You wolf in sheep clothing. People are staring. You are hateful and deceitful, and I've had enough of this right now. Well, wait a minute. Where are you going? What are you going to do? I'm going to stop this train right in its tracks, and I'm just the gal that knows how. <laughs> Helen. Hello, Steve. 
Helen, where have you been? I got in an hour ago. A count of Barkerville's fascinating character, and you were gone. Uh, I guess I owe you an apology. Cigars? No, thanks. Huh? Cigarettes? Don't get it. Tobacco? Candy? Magazines? Fresh fruit? Coffee? Souvenir postcards? Novelties? Baby. Last time around? Honey, just like the candy butcher on the Baltimore and Ohio. <laughs> Well, that's the story. The nearest chance saved Helen Appleby from the classic fate of leaping out of the frying pan into the fire. And to this day, they tell the story in the Northridge Roundhouse of how Helen Appleby, a woman, mind you, pulled the air on old number six, flatting every wheel and putting the entire train in the shop for a full week. <laughs> In a moment, Mr. James Hilton will return to tell us about the absorbing story which he has selected for dramatization next week. Who took you to your first circus? Who fixed your broken toys when you were a child? Who was the first pal you ever had? Of course, it was your father. And this is to remind you that Sunday is Father's Day. He may be dad to you or just plain pop, but you can be pretty sure he's mighty proud of you and would like to know that you're proud of him. So don't disappoint dear old dad on Father's Day. To let him know how much he means to you, send him a greeting that's warm, sincere, and affectionate. Whether you want your words to be serious or gay, dignified or informal, there's a hallmark card that will say just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. So stop in tomorrow at one of those fine stores that carry hallmark cards and select your Father's Day greeting. And remember to look on the back for those three identifying words, a hallmark card, the words that say you cared enough to send the very best. Now here again is James Hilton. You might like to know that Mrs. Union Station's author, Douglas Welch, is here tonight in our audience. And I would like to take this opportunity to compliment him on his most delightful story. The role of Helen Appleby was played by Mary Jane Croft. Steve Appleby was Elliot Lewis, and our cast included Mary Lansing, Frank Nelson, Joe Kearns, and David Ellis. And I think you'll agree with me that another of our star performers tonight was our sound effects man, Harry Esmond. Next week, it, we're again giving a story its radio premiere when we shall present Unless Love is Music by Libby Block. Two things you might guess from this title. There's love in the story and there's music. In fact, if you like a delightful blend of romance and drama, don't miss it. Until next Thursday then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> Tonight's story was adapted for radio by Milton Geiger. Music was arranged and conducted by Lynn Murray. To be doubly sure of the finest quality, always look on the back of your cards for those three identifying words, a Hallmark card. Hallmark cards are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Now this is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present for the first time on radio The Romantic Mystery by Libby Block, Unless Love is Music. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KNBC, Kansas City, Missouri.